Did The Last of Us Part 2 really deserve Game of the Year? This is going to be a very touchy subject, so let's begin. First off, to get the positives out the way, I want to say the awards show itself was pretty awesome for the most part. There were a bunch of cool trailers, some cool reveals, and things to look forward to in the year of 2021. But after everything was all said and done, we need to address the elephant in the room regarding The Last of Us Part 2. Did this game really deserve a game of the year? There's no denying The Last of Us Part 2 was a highly anticipated game to come out this year. A lot of people were looking forward to it, especially after the ending of the first game, which in my opinion is one of the best way to end the game on an open-ended ending. I was one of a few people who felt the game didn't need a sequel because the ending of the first game was just perfect the way it is. It was at a point in time where video games, if they do well enough in sales, companies want to do a sequel and possibly make a franchise out of it too. And personally, it was getting to a point where I felt not everything needs a sequel because when you oversaturate something, the quality of the franchise itself can get tainted and stained. But I will say there are exceptions when a video game and movies can redeem themselves when you have the right people in place that care about the source material, but that's besides the point of what I'm about to discuss. The Last of Us Part 2 was not only a game that continued the story from the first game, but did so in a way that was very polarizing to the gaming community. A lot of people say that this game is the last Jedi of video games, and I can kind of see the comparison. Now this video will lead into some spoiler territory. Even though I think everyone knew what happened in the story because of the leaks that happened prior to the release of the game. Now I for one wasn't really angry about Joel dying, but I was disappointed on how he died more than him needing to die. His actions in the first games when we look at it from an outside perspective and out of our own feelings, he did screw over humanity. But you know what they say, you might be a hero in one person's story, but also a villain in someone else's. Abby, the character who killed Joe, had every right to exact her revenge against him. But I want you to hear that phrase one more time. She had every right to exact her revenge against him. But the problem is, the structure of the game story itself screwed up the experiences for some of the gamers. But I'm going to talk about the story in the future video and how the story could have been better. But for now, how Joe and Tommy went out in that scene goes against how they were represented in the first game in a post-apocalyptic world they're in and this is 20 plus years on up. These guys were survivors. They did some heinous shit. They've been around a lot of people who are either good or bad from experiences. And you mean to tell me that they were willingly open up to who they are and where they live and who their names were to strangers they don't even know? Doesn't make sense to me. Now you could argue that, hey, he saved Abby, so they felt a little comfortable. Sure, maybe. But I find that very hard to believe when it goes against how Joe especially was represented in the first game. I want you to see this scene right here. Joe and Ellie, they are driving to their destination to find the fireflies. And during their travel, they see a guy on the road who was injured. Now Ellie believes the guy needed help, but Joe knew deep down this guy was lying and saying he ain't hurt and he drove against him anyways, to where he pulls out a gun. So it goes to show you that he ain't easily willing to trust anybody he just met. He did the same thing when he met Henry and Sam. Joe is skeptical. That's the kind of person he is, or at least how he was represented in the first game. Then there's a scene where you get to the climax of Ellie's story. You play as Abby and her follow up to the story, to where it felt like filler or another game. And that's when the structure of the story gets all over the place to where you lose focus. It's like they want you to care about these characters that you know damn well are going to die based on Ellie's actions. The fight between Abby and Ellie was very nauseating of an experience. Because the idea of killing someone you felt connected to, at least from the first game, from a perspective of the person who killed Joe, did not sit right with many people. It was too much of an emotional roller coaster ride, and that's how people felt. And then when everything is all said and done, and nobody actually died except for Jesse and Tommy getting a face injury, the story could have ended right there at that very moment. Ellie could have lived her life with Dina and the baby, and Abby could have lived her life with Lev trying to find the fireflies. But no, the story must continue on, and it dragged on longer than it needs to be to where the characters who we invested our time into are now fighting a second time, where it's even more emotional roller coaster than it is to the first one. And the most annoying part about it is when Abby figured out on why she killed Joel. She tells her to her face she understood why she did what she did. 
but even after some time has passed, you still want to exact revenge again? And even when you wanted to go through the process of almost killing Abby, you'll pull back because now you want to practice forgiveness when it's already too late? That's dumb. That forgiveness could have happened after Abby clapped your ass in the first place. Like, I get what Neil Druckmann and his team were going for with the story and his theme about revenge, but how they went about it was the wrong way to get the message across. They almost had it. They almost had the landing, but they screwed up by continuing the story after that ass whipping. But back to the question, did this game deserve game of the year? Part of me want to say no, but the other part of me can see why people feel this game deserved game of the year. But the problem is, when you find out how the Game Awards show works, it's bullshit. Because when you find out that the voting jury, which consists of the media outlets and the like of IGN, GameSpot, and so many others, they control 90% of the votes. And the public, which consists of you and me, the average everyday gamer, we control about 10% of the votes. So it already seemed like everything was all in favor for Naughty Dog from the get-go. Personally, I think the voting system should be about 50-50. They feel that if the public got control of most of the votes, it would be in favor for one particular platform over the other. And they feel like there shouldn't be anything that should be socially engineered, whatever the hell that means. Sony's other game, Ghost of Tsushima, was the game that won players' voice in the awards show, as well as the best art direction. But I do feel like other games in the likes of Doom Eternal, Animal Crossing New Horizon, Final Fantasy Remake, and Hades were shafted out of getting other rewards because The Last of Us Part 2 won 7 in total. Game of the Year, Best Narrative, Best Action Adventure Game, Best Sound Design, Best Game Direction, Best Performance in the likes of Laura Bailey for her performance as playing Abby. And then there's Innovation and Accessibility, whatever the hell that means. Now overall, I don't hate The Last of Us Part 2, I think it's a fine game, but here's the thing about the Game Awards show when it comes to the Game of the Year award. What are we basing it off of exactly? Are we basing it off of story? Are we basing it off the gameplay? Are we basing it off of lasting impact? Or are we basing it off the content? Like what are we basing it off of exactly? Because when I look at games that are best of the year, for me it's about impact. How well the game is made. Does the game have any content? Is this game worth revisiting after a playthrough? And how would this game stand out compared to its competitors? But everyone has their own different criteria of what the best game of the year is. So if you got the time, I want you to tell me what you think game of the year should be in your list. What makes a game a game of the year for you? Please let me know in the comments if you have time. Now to wrap things up, I hope we don't get into a time where there will be more disconnect between journalists and reviewers against the average everyday consumer or in this case, the gamer. I don't believe this game has any political agenda behind it, but I do feel there is some level of bias into this game's acclaim. I also don't think anyone has been paid off to give this game high praises because it says so on the rules itself of the Game Awards show. What will the future be for The Last of Us Part 3? I hope the direction will be in a place where everyone enjoyed the game for what it is, and I hope there won't be a divide between gamers and the review critics. And lastly, Naughty Dog. Get your shit together and not let another leaker show off your game story to where everyone is freaking the hell out with no clear context of what the fuck is going on. Because had that leak never happened, I don't think the situation would have been as severe as it was prior. And also too, be more straightforward with the promotional material. You literally promoted a game that had everyone thinking Joe would be in the game entirely to find out that he was going to die merely two hours into the game's plot. And also, you only show one trailer of Abby and she was gone. And we never see her that often as much. She should have been in the promotional material too. That's all I had to say.